while growing up in india as a child i was very scared i hardly spoke in front of strangers when i did i used to stammer my priority was pleasing people around me respecting elders and playing happily i was never taught to be my authentic self i remember despite being a good student excellent at studies and sports i didn't dare to speak in front of my teachers because of fear of stammering i still remember every detail of an incident till date that happened in my high school i was 15 and was very excited about the debate competition at school i wanted to participate and speak at the competition and wrote a beautiful script when my script got selected to speak for the topic i was cloud 9 but one of my teachers suggested i give my script to another member in the group for her to speak on the topic as an active speaker and asked me to participate as a passive speaker that is contribute just ideas and questions to the team to debate on the topic i cried for days before and after the competition i knew i was not given the opportunity to speak because of my stammering problem i grew up in a well protected family despite the utmost care at home often women in india particularly young girls are sexually harassed in public places having experienced it couple of times in public transportation i was scared to do anything outside my comfort zone i was in constant fear every time i had to take a public bus or train on my own when returning home from any after school practice i would be scared as in who would touch me or rub me or take advantage of the compact crowded situation in the public transportation welcome everyone today i want to talk about my journey and how i have overcome fear and learned to do be my authentic self and fight for women empowerment also i want to talk about examples of why an enterprise that empowers women and encourages diverse workforce is more likely to deliver more innovative products and create its impact in today's world i will share my journey through four key messages 11 years ago i came to ireland to do my phd in chemistry during my phd i became good friends with a chinese phd student in my group from her i learned so much about china and chinese new year celebrations i wanted to experience it but ignored her invitation for 3 years when she again invited me in the last year of phd i decided to let go of my fears and be myself i bought a ticket and planned the holiday to attend the chinese new year in january 2017 end of december 2016 i got a job offer with a start date 2 days prior to the china trip considering it was my first job i almost dropped the plan of going to china despite desperately wanting to go i started the job in january and during the induction meeting on day 2 not sure what triggered me to raise my hand when asked any questions I asked if it was okay to take 10 days off in the first week of the job. To my surprise, the director granted permission. I rushed home, packed my bags, called my friend in Shanghai that I'm boarding the flight the next morning and left with a note for my husband. He was angry and upset and did not talk to me throughout my stay in China. Apart from that part, it was one of the best trips of my life. Very refreshing with mixed emotions and the feeling of being yourself and living your choice was surreal. I learned a lot from that trip and set rules how I wanted to live the rest of my life. An important life lesson I learned from that experience is to be confident 
and believe in yourself now most successful people are successful because they are confident being confident alone will not make you a strong person taking risks and facing your fears gives you an opportunity to become confident in your decision making and here is one such one such example just a couple of years ago i got an opportunity to volunteer for a women's organization focused on driving gender parity and gender equality despite being better educated overall women aged 25 to 64 with a degree in ireland earn 28% less than their male counterparts globally women earn 37% less than men in similar roles as per the world economic forum globally based on the current trends it will take 257 years to close the gender gap in economic participation and contribution 257 years is a long time to wait which means neither me nor my daughter or my grandchild will get to see how a gender equal society will look like this led me to volunteer again not sure what triggered but i decided to lead the ireland chapter as a president of the chapter i had to build a leadership team grow members in the chapter and execute a strategy to promote awareness and discussions on topics like gender parity unconscious bias in the workplace and so on that will help me and all the working women i was scared very scared because this was something i have never done before i then remembered the china trip i decided the only way to let go of my fear is to be myself as a leader i thought i'll focus on one thing caring i wanted to care about my team the members in the chapter and i was sure the results would automatically be delivered through a caring passionate team i built a very strong leadership team i grew the chapter members by 10 times and delivered very impactful events including mentoring program all in a year end of last year i received everest award from the organization's europe region for extraordinary leadership skills and significant contributions towards organization's mission of furthering the advancement of women in healthcare worldwide interestingly networking had a huge impact on me and on my team through this and such organizations you are surrounded by high performing strong men and women who influences you inspires you to play a strong role in every endeavor you take now only 69% of women are open to taking risks in their workplace to further their career one of the reason why i succeeded when taking various risks is because i ignored the distractions and did not compromise most mothers take a back step in their career thinking about their child unconsciously society instills in our brains that mothers are the primary caregivers of their children after having my first child both my parents and my in-laws suggested the same that i take up a job that is less stressful less competitive so that i can focus more on the home and the baby i took a deep breath and remembered the labor day and then my daughter i love my daughter and i love spending time with her i want to grow with her learn with her and be her role model after having her i was energized motivated to work harder smarter and inspire her i told myself if i'm going to spend a good chunk of my day at work i better do meaningful work that motivates me challenges me to go back every day to work one might say 
you are a better mother if you compromise with your work or career because you are now able to give more time to your children well i disagree every hour i get to spend with my daughter i cherish and as a family we make the best use of it it is also important to have conversations with your partner and make them understand your ambitions in my case i let go of the kitchen and the household chores and trusted my partner to contribute equally together we are building our careers and managing the house and the baby to embrace and succeed at various challenges it is important to constantly learn and seize any learning opportunities for most women in india the default professions were to be a teacher or a doctor or a nurse i too dreamt of being a teacher perhaps in a university and the obvious career move after my phd was to work towards becoming a faculty in a university because it felt industry was very harsh to women after my phd i received industrial fellowship from irish government which gave me an opportunity to work with an r&d team in a company it allowed me to think and dream beyond academia and university i constantly kept learning and doing courses on weekends in the evenings and certifications to move into different roles different industries i did not stop or pause as a wife or as a mother or as a manager today i work in a big pharma company as a technical head or a leader i am not an it expert but my expertise lies in empowering teams instead of micromanaging i empower them to deliver results as a trained chemist and having worked in the lab for nearly 10 years if someone told me then that i would be working on digital projects it projects leading sap experts data analyst i would have probably laughed all of this was only possible because i was willing to continuously learn it is important to play your strengths and solve your weaknesses i truly believe if you follow these simple rules you too can transform into a strong person and let go of your fears like i did in becoming a leader and help society and your organization to change for better faster for the past few minutes i have been talking about how women could and should strive to be confident calculated risk takers who can give their best selves i want to now focus on why diversity in workplace leads to better outcomes for organizations with the continuous changing landscape where automation is changing how we do our jobs every day flexible workforce will be the secret sauce to an organization's growth potential in terms of human resources in all my years of experience what i observed is organizations or enterprises that have relatively higher female ratio of leaders end up building a more inclusive and flexible workplace for example in addition to my role as digital transformation head i contribute a lot of my time and effort to build and deliver on a organization's diversity and inclusivity culture some of the initiatives include my team and i delivered setting up free feminine period product station in our facility for the first time in 40 years this had enormous employee satisfaction boost we have invited hr experts to help our female colleagues to grow and learn and prepare for next roles by providing active and continuous training through how to prepare their resumes how to face interview panel and so on for the first time we've invited lgbtq plus network to our ireland campus 
last year through this initiative we focused on how we can become an ally to help our lgbtq plus colleagues live their best lives also empowering our female colleagues to take up leadership roles through our women in leadership network working with local schools in promoting stem programs particularly among young girls and working on a hiring practices to reduce the gender pay gap these sort of initiatives where the focus is on delivering inclusivity are often delivered in organization with women leaders this in turn helps the whole organization to have better leaders and better humans for example in an organization that has gender parity maternity leaves become far from a taboo conversation in the same organization we often see men are not afraid to go on longer paternity leaves as men tend to work in a more diverse teams they tend to become better partners and better parents it is a win 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 as a result the person the organization and the community all three benefits it is now widely accepted that diverse teams tend to make better decisions often because they are more representative of the wider consumer base lastly as you see i am 38 weeks pregnant soon my husband and i will be proud parents of two daughters i believe my work in striving for gender parity will help my daughters to live in a more inclusive and fairer world thank you